In Sudan, a paramilitary group claims it now has control of the presidential palace and the airport in the capital of Khartoum, as tensions between those forces and the army erupt into violence. Heavy gunfire and fighting has been reported around the palace and army headquarters. The U.S. ambassador to Sudan said he is sheltering in place amid the clashes. The military has been in charge of Sudan since a coup in 2021, which ended a power sharing arranged uh, former formed rather following the ousting of former long term president. Uh, for the very latest, let's bring in CNN's Larry Mad Madawo. So, Larry, uh, what more do we know about all of the circumstances and the situation right now? Fred, this is a conflict between the Sudanese armed forces and the very powerful paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces, which are led by the two most powerful military men in Sudan. It's just after 5 p.m. in Sudan, and we've seen a whole day of heavy gunfire and fighting, smoke coming from some buildings. There's been reported fighting around the army headquarters, the presidential palace, state television as well. And there's back and forth and blame games between the rapid support forces and the military about who attacked first. But these tensions have been building over the past couple of weeks, and especially this week, and this was always going to happen. In this really testy situation, this um, difficult arrangement in an attempt to try and bring Sudan back to civilian rule since the 2021 October coup that you mentioned, Sudan is ruled by what is called a sovereign council. The leader of the sovereign council, General Al-Burhan, is also the de facto leader of the military and the country. But his number two is Lieutenant General Hamerti, and he is in charge of the Russia-supported rapid support forces. And that the center of this conflict is over who exactly gets to be in charge of a combined military force if that were to happen. It's one sticking point in a return to civilian rule. And I want to show you some important context here from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Major parties in, uh, in Khartoum some weeks ago reached a very important um, framework agreement on how to proceed with a uh, transition to civilian government. And there's been real progress in trying to move that forward. But um, I think there's an, a real opportunity to move forward on the agreed framework. Uh, and certainly that's what we're, we're, we're strongly supporting. Um, it's, a, it's a fragile situation. The U.S. says there is no immediate plans at this time to evacuate U.S. citizens. Many, including the U.K., the U.S., and others are telling the citizens in the country to stay put. I want to read this statement from you, for you also from the African Union, which is an important regional voice here. It says it's appealing to the parties, the armed forces, and the rapid support forces in particular to immediately stop the destruction of the country, the terrorization of its population, and the bloodshed during the last 10 days of Ramadan. So still no idea as to where this is heading, but many people concerned, Fred, that it could be a return to civil war.